just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace it. Rush pain, that things hate me, damn Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. Welcome back to Fort Meade Declassified. I'm Gloria Ann Martin from the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office. I'm here with Chad Jones, and today we have with us Armed Forces Retirement Home Public Affairs Officer, Miss Karen Novavieski, <laughs> to talk with us about the retirement home with campuses in Washington, D.C. and Gulfport, Mississippi, and all they have to offer the retired community of Fort Meade. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Okay, so I have the second best job. Um, in the government. Um, I had the best job in the military, which was a broadcast journalist, and now I have the best job I feel in the government. And so working for the Armed Forces Retirement Home, I've been there a little under a year, and I liken it all the time to Disney World. And why do I do that? Because it's the happiest place on earth. And when I walk through the Washington campus, all I see are smiles. Smile, smile, smiles. And that's on the part of the residents, but I think most importantly is that I see that on everyone who provides care um, for, these, for these residents, um, especially when you're talking upper levels of care with long-term support, memory support, um, assisted living, etc. The amount of care, the amount of love, the amount of respect, I, I've not seen that um, in many retirement communities or nursing homes. And I'm not putting them down at all. But when you're part of a mission like this um, and everyone's pulling together, it is really quite amazing. So it really is. So we were talking before about my dad lived there for a bit. And he was smiling in front of all the photos he had. He was smiling too, you know, 40 years ago. Um, so you are basically a full service retirement home. Talk a little bit about, you were talking about eligibility. Sure. And, and, and who could get in, because a lot of people don't, I don't think, even know this service lot, is available. You're absolutely right. A lot of people don't. Um, I have uh, worked with um, the military, uh, help me here, TAPS program, yep. so that we can get a little more exposure that way. I'm going to be hitting up uh, basic training uh, places as well, because 50 cents comes out of all active duty paychecks per paycheck. So you're talking a dollar a month. And I'm not saying that that is a significant amount of money, um, but wouldn't it be great if you really knew where that was going? Mm. And um, so- So we, right now, so Specialist Campos is in the room with us. She is paying $1 a month, 50 cents per check to well, help support the home. Exactly, and I do have to ask the question, did you know you were paying 50 cents? I did not. See, look at that. <laughs> Learning has occurred right here. She did not know. <laughs> and tell all your friends. Um, so basically what a lot of people may not know is that we are not supported by the federal government. We work off a trust. It is um, separate from all of that, and that trust is made up of monies that come from the 50 cents uh, per paycheck. Also, in case any of you were wondering, here is another little tidbit. If anybody has been uh, disciplined in any way and has gone to captain's mass, asked, or you know had an Article 15, that money comes to the home. Uh, that okay. money is okay. coming to the home. And I will tell you that we did see a drastic reduction <laughs> in that money. Uh, going through the Iraq and Afghanistan uh, hmm. wars. Are they related? I'm not entirely sure, but we did see that that number decrease, which I guess big applause to big military really? for getting that done. We also take donations, and we look at ways to take this 274-acre community and find ways to have it generate income for us as well. So currently we, um, we lease our building with the building I'm in out to a charter school and they have brought certainly more than money they've brought this this vitality and this youth and it is middle school and as often as we can we do have them come over to the campus and interact with our with our residents it is it's spectacular because again that type of respect and that type of 
understanding about who these individuals are, what they've done, what they mean, what, what their sacrifice meant and means today it is astonishing. So it's learning on two levels. Um, and that's fantastic. And, and I think I got, when we were talking about Campos, um, what does that 50 cents and what, who are your residents? So our residents are made up of, from all the services, uh, to include Coast Guard, and uh, we don't have anyone from the Space Force yet, but they're <laughs> but they're, they are covered. Um, that just means I have to go out and get flags, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> so it's, it's for all the services. Now, as they started out, the home started out, they were putting together the Naval Asylum uh, up in Pennsylvania, and they sort of outgrew it. And soon after they started construction on that, they started the construction on the old soldier's home, which of course now has a different name. So in 1991, Congress brought uh, both of those facilities together under one agency, the Armed Forces Retirement Home. And since then they work uh, compatibly and they are in terms of monetary um, contribution, et cetera, they are the same. So yeah, it's um, so retirees, VA. You were just telling me now yeah. that VA can. Well, let's let's define VA. Okay. So obviously, we take twenty years, twenty year plus retirees from all those services. If you have a, v uh, oh yeah, and and let me be very specific, enlisted personnel. You had to have been enlisted. So officer friends out there, I'm really, really sorry, but if you call us, we can get you a couple of names of places you might be interested in. We'll never leave you behind. So you we have the 20 year veteran. If you have a VA disability of 10% or higher, you are also eligible. If you served in a women's component of the armed forces before June 12th, 1948, you are eligible. Now, before you say, well, Karen, who are those people? Oh, they're still at the home. Mm -hmm. They are still at the home, and they are tremendous. I There's one woman, she served with the Marine Corps and uh, during World War II, and I can't keep up with her. I mean, she takes off on that walker. I'm, I'm <laughs> in the dust. She leaves me right in the dust. And she's just a, an incredibly fantastic person, and if you can imagine with incredibly fantastic stories to tell. Yep. Which of course is the best part of this job are the war stories. So we also have um, another category because we recently in the last few years opened up to reserve and national guard. So if you are retired, uh, the, same, the same things, the eligibility requirements are for 20 year active duty or 20 year um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Reserve and National right. Guard. Plus, oh, here's for all you youngsters out there. Plus, we opened up to taking couples. So I know a lot of you out there were thinking, I'm not going to be able to sell my house. I'm not going to be able to do anything if my spouse is still alive. I obviously don't want to move where I can't take my spouse with me. So in recognizing that, the Armed Forces Retirement Home recognizes spouses service as well and as we all know spouses serve right alongside you know their husband or wife now the key here is you had to be married before you retired so it, the main thing is is that they're in the deers system and that they are on your tricare account and they, they do have a fee that they pay. However, it is a far reduced fee and it just gets loaded in to the fees that we have. So that's how you are eligible. Now, let me just say that eligibility does not necessarily mean admittance. So once we have you laid out as being eligible, then you are sent down to our medical staff and they will evaluate your medical forms they may need more information. They may need you to take a functional assessment to determine whether or not you're a fall risk um, with ankles, knees, uh, wrists, etc. We might ask you to take a mental health evaluation. 
we might ask you to come on to the site to meet with our doctors and and so they can have a really good idea of the resident that's coming in. They know right. medically where they stand. There are times that because you need to come in independent living or independent living plus, that these individuals don't make that requirement. What's the difference? The difference independent is... Independent living, I'm assuming you can live by yourself, independent living plus is with some help? With some help. If you maybe need help uh, with a little light housekeeping, or maybe you need a little help getting down to, the, to our chow hall. Those are the types of things where it isn't assisted living, where you need help with bathing, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why I tell people, don't wait to figure out what you're going to do. Because that is where, in terms of, of eligible applicants, that'll be where we lose them, is in that mental, or is in the medical um, part of, of the evaluation. From the medical part, we then go over to uh, what we call our business center. They will assess your um, documents, your tax returns, et cetera, et cetera. And they will come up with a fee structure for you and then once we have that in, we send it down to the campuses for the campus administrators to make the final determination. So to say that it takes a minute is kind of an understatement. What's well, the government? Well, it's not funded by... Nope. But it's still, there's still some bureaucracy in it. That's what we do? Uh, well, we've taken a lot of the bureaucracy out. Where we will lose time on, on these applications coming in is they will come in partial. Right. So they'll, they'll send in this, this, and this, but we still need this, 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 and this. Yep. So then we're working with them, who they need to go to, where they get this information. We work with that applicant very closely. And if I have to say one thing about the office where, where I am, we not only handle public affairs and marketing, we also handle the full pre-admissions process. Oh, okay. And I can, I can tell you that my staff is amazing. And I know everyone says that, but mine really is. Uh, we, they love to reach out. They love talking to the veterans. We have a less than 24-hour turnaround on emails and phone calls that anyone makes so that we can get with you, determine what you need, and then get you the forms you need, walk you through everything else. And you mentioned price a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what is it? And I know we talked a little bit about fees. Right. So what, are, what are the fees for if somebody were to want to be able to live in the home. Okay. Or like homes, because there's two homes, places. Homes, because there's two. Yes, Armed Forces Retirement Home is a bit of a misnomer, because yes, there is there are two. So right now, um, the business center will take all of your income, run it through their form, through their um, system, and independent living is 46.7% of your gross income. If your 46.7% is more than $2,290, you will be capped at $2,290. Now, obviously, um, as we go through year by year, that number will elevate a little, um, unless we have a major uh, change in that. So, uh, again, and, and especially for my couples out there, if Hard, you know, hardly speaking, if the sponsor or what we call the sponsor and the spouse, if the sponsor should pass away, the Armed Forces Retirement Home will take care of that spouse until, until such time as that spouse wishes to leave or passes. And we do that at our expense. Wow. Oh, wow. We, we just really, really believe in taking care of the veteran and the veteran's family. Hi, just a few items to highlight this week. First, Community Information Expo. This is a great opportunity for service members, civilians, and their families to learn about programs and services offered on the installation and in the surrounding communities. The expo takes place October 5th from 3 to 6 p.m. at the McGill Training Center. Second, DG App. If you haven't downloaded Digital Garrison or used it recently, DG App has new features that provide the most current installation information within three clicks or less. Download it today. Now back to the conversation. 
So if somebody's listening right now or when once we're recorded and they either find out that, hey, my parents would be interested mm-hmm. in this or, hey, I'm getting ready to retire. This is some. Where is the best place for them to get information? You said start the process early. Where is the best place to start the process? So the best place to start the process right now is going to be at our website, afrh.gov. Couple of, and, and you're going to get a lot of information there. Um, so you're going to have to sift through a little bit. We're in the process of simplifying and changing the website. We do have something on there. It's going to look like you're filling out an application. You are not. You are sending in information to get an application. I'm hoping to have this whole process fully digitized by the new year. Because right now we're, we're waiting in paper, if you can imagine. Um, and then call us. We have some of the most dedicated staff you could ever imagine, and that number is 1-800-422-9988. It is is not manned 24-7. We do, there is, I know you want to reach a human being, but if you leave a message, I guarantee you're going to hear back from us within 24 hours, if not sooner. And I just want to say, anyone who might be interested should come out and do a tour. Come out and check us out. How would they do that? Uh, They would call that number, and uh, that person would go ahead and arrange a tour for them. So we let you, we go ahead and tour you through our campus and, or through the home itself. And then if there's anything in addition you'd like to see, whether that's the golf course or any of other of our outdoor um, outdoor activity areas, not a problem. I have a golf cart, and I'm not afraid to use it. Nice. <laughs> Best perk oh. of the job. <laughs> um, what you got? I think we covered everything. And we talked about some of those amenities that we have. That's what I was going to get to. So cable. Cable, yeah. yeah. When you live in that, you live in the apartment, because I'm thinking... Not apartment. This is not? No. Well, what do you call it? It's a room. It? It's a room. It's okay. a room. So it's all in the same building? Yes. Okay. And we actually have a small tunnel. It doesn't feel like a tunnel, but a tunnel that goes between two of our buildings um, to ensure that our residents never actually have to walk outside. And that sounds horrible, but in rain or uh, today, snow... Right too hot, what have you. Right. Yeah. We want to make sure that they are completely comfortable going from the residential building over to where many of our activities are. And so what do they what do they get in their room? Okay. So um, we provide a single bed, a bureau, and a nightstand. Most of our applicants and future residents want to bring their own furniture. We happily will empty a room for you. If your furniture is what you want, we will get it in for you. That's great. So, oh, so laundry is 100% free and included. Um, That's doing your own laundry. So all of, and we just changed out our washers and dryers. So they're even more amazing. All of that's included along with three meals and any snacks that you might want through the day. We have transportation to all medical appointments. We have fun various trips and other activities that get our residents off uh, the campus and maybe downtown a little bit more. We did have residents down at the Capitol 4th celebration. I don't know how they did it. I, don't, I was dying that day. It was so hot. But they were down there doing their party thing and then came back and did their party thing for the 4th of July fireworks, which if you know where the home sits, it's on the second highest level in D.C., so it looks down over into DC proper. Not super close or anything like that, but you can see the cap or you can see the Washington Monument and various things around. It's amazing. The view, mm, totally. I think you told me that's the best place to watch fireworks. It is absolutely the best place. You don't have all the smoke when you're trying to look up because you're kind of looking down. Um, well, at least a place in DC. So you mentioned the golf port. Is on the water, which is it's, beautiful. Yes, it's across from the water. Yes. Right. So what we offer there, I mean, our rooms are larger. 
uh, in Washington right now, on that Washington campus, we now have gone to a wait list. Not because we're full. We are getting ready to do a major renovation of the living spaces for our residents. So we will increase this room, the room size almost double and almost triple for our um, couples. Which, if you saw the size, the rooms are kind of on the small side. So yeah. being able to open those up a little bit will be spectacular. Um, in Gulfport, obviously, we are still, we are not full there. I think we're at 75%. But your room, again, will have that balcony, will have that beautiful view of the ocean. You can watch the sunrise. <coughs> if you would rather uh, walk on over to the beach, we have a pedestrian bridge for that. So you don't have to worry about crossing the street or doing Frogger trying to get right. across to the beach. We got you covered. And then residents can have their cars? <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. So you are free and independent. Right. You. It's just as if you had a condo, um, but without all the extra fees. Right. So we are an all-inclusive um, retirement community, and that's the other thing too. It's not a nursing home. This is a retirement community. We call it the home, but it's right. not. Got to so, call it something. Got to call it something, and 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 that's sort of been sometimes difficult for people to understand the difference but I'm like no you know it's it's kind of like um oh what's the place that Jimmy Buffett has down in Georgia um Margarita. Mar Margaritaville now it's not like that <laughs> <You're sending laughs> <out bars. laughs> we do have a bar we have a lounge um it's open two hours a week but we have a lounge um but it's all included not in, well actually to include your alcohol um, we, it's, <laughs> a lot of our um, stuff for the bar is donated from, um, from Costco or uh, other grocery stores that have liquor. Uh, so they donate quite a bit, snacks, bar snacks and whatnot. So there isn't the, the need to make money off that, if you will. And again, <laughs> I just can't get over, everything's included. Yeah, no, what? You need a podiatrist, it's included. You... You need a dentist included. You want extra meals included. COVID shots included. There's just not a point you're really going to have to, you know, break out your pocketbook unless you're going going off the campus, etc. So, do you need volunteers? Of course. We we have a lot of volunteers as well. So I don't know if I happen to mention, but we do also have at the Washington campus two stocked fishing ponds. And they are, <laughs> they're really, really pretty. We were just down there the other day, and just to let you know what kind of wildlife there is, we just drove along kind of a hedge, and two fawns jumped out and ran down to the golf course. I was like, nice. wow, that is so cool. Um, okay. What was your question? No, I asked you about <laughs> volunteers. Oh, so if yeah, so we, we have a lot of volunteers. So the Coast Guard maintains our ponds. Um, That's where the ponds came from. Okay. Oh yeah, Coast Guard wanted to donate, so they did, and so they're out every summer. But we do, we have a volunteer community, and I hate to say this, but I just poached the volunteer coordinator for my office. So I'm sure everything will still work out perfectly. If you come to our website, they will have the volunteer tab, and you'll be in touch with a human being we will then work with you in terms of scheduling and other things that we may have going on that you would like to support. That's fantastic. You can also donate through our website. That's okay. <laughs> Besides the, the 50 cents a check. That exactly. If you're feeling like maybe a dollar fifty's in, in your pocket, we'll take the dollar okay. fifty. Um, all contributions are, are welcome. Well, I would say you passed at, at this podcast interview so she passed. Yeah. I passed. flying now colors I yes. at least 70 percent exactly which is all you needed to pass Seven you should have told go. us that you should have told you us you wouldn't that. have tried as hard no it's true i wouldn't have i know <laughs> but i had to take it too i'm like seven on go i'm out um <laughs> but thank you this is the first podcast i've done since um since i took over public affairs Nice. For the home. So okay. thank you very we'll much for back. the opportunity. I would love to come back. 
-hmm. I cannot talk enough about what we offer, who we offer it to, and really what you get for your money. And we well, welcome. If, if, yeah, and if you want to, you know, outside of here, talk to some of our, we need help with community groups and stuff like that to meet some people, let me know. Thank I you. absolutely will. Absolutely help, okay. Excellent. Thank you all very much for having me today. Yes, thank you for joining us today. And thank you everyone who listened in on today's podcast. Uh, we'll see you next time on Fort Meade Declassified. Just got it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so basic.